First of all, uh, I thank you very much for the invitation. And it's a honor for me to speak here, especially uh, to the Ukrainian colleagues as well. And it's a honor for me that uh, Professor Smugler is chairing this session. Uh, I'm very thankful for that as well. So I want to talk about multifamily intervention for patients with severe mental illnesses, uh, a special method we developed in our hospital. Um, <clears throat> it is a psychiatric hospital near Darmstadt in Germany. And uh, I will try to make a, a long story very short because we have not so uh, enough time. Uh, I want to give you uh, first of an overview about what uh, we, uh, uh, what are severe mental illnesses, how we uh, define them, what are their special risks, um, <clears throat> what are the special requirements for the treatment of uh, patients with uh, severe mental illnesses, and then a short definition of psychoeducation and multifamily intervention, what it is, and the structure of multifamily intervention, how we did it, and uh, how does it help? And I show you some results of the studies uh, uh, we did with this method. So, so to start, <coughs> severe mental illness means uh, all uh, types of non-orgenic psychosis, uh, which uh, leads for more than two years and which has uh, impaired psychosocial functioning. And this includes all mental disorders, regardless of diagnosis, that meet these criteria. So, severe courses of schizophrenic and affective psychosis, personality disorders, especially borderline personality disorders, chronic neurotic and adjustment disorders, and also disorders um, due to... Uh, with these uh, mental illnesses, they have... Uh, very often somatic comorbidities, cardiovascular diseases, for example, uh, smoking and high risk of cancer. Uh, they have mental comorbidities as well. Um, depression, addiction in schizophrenia, for example, and a high risk of suicide, unemployment, homelessness, and a shortened lifespan of uh, 14 years. This is a very... Uh, we, we have to think about uh, what we can do to uh, stop this uh, development. And if we treat patients with, schizophrenic pa uh, with schizophrenia, we have the problems of side effects for the medication, for example, and we have non-response rates. Uh, so uh, in, for the longer term of uh, schizophrenic diseases, we, uh, very often, we are very often helpless and don't know uh, how we can help these patients. The same is in chronic depression. They have also somatic comorbidities. Uh, they have also a high risk of uh, suicide and also side effects of the medication, a high non-response rate. Uh, so that means <clears throat> these are uh, illnesses we have really to care for. Uh, what does it mean in, in practice is shown by this uh, uh, slide here from uh, an, an initiative for psychiatrists in the United States. They uh, uh, show that uh, within the United States, around about 8 million people suffer from SMI, and that most of them, 90% are treated in the acute phase, not in psychiatric hospitals, but in emergency rooms. Uh, because the psychiatric hospitals have not uh, enough capacity in the United States for that. But many of them are homeless, and uh, what is the most astonishing factor is that more uh, people with severe mental illnesses stay in jails than in psychiatric beds in the United States. Um, <clears throat> so, um, they, they are high-risk patients, and we have to do everything uh, to help them. Uh, here at the right side, oh, sorry, sorry, one. Ah. Oh, yes, here. Um, at the right side, you see the uh, uh, years um, <clears throat> uh, 
where, the, where uh, the years are lost by the illness. And in personality disorders, it's around about 18 years, and alcohol use 16 years, and in schizophrenia, 14 years, as I told before. Uh, so <clears throat> that is for us a task, really, to do everything what we can uh, to help these people. So uh, if you look at the uh, uh, recommendations how to treat them, uh, I, sh I show you here just a so short uh, summary of guidelines from the American Psychiatric Association, from the English um, <clears throat> uh, NICE Institute, and from the German, uh, German Psychiatry. And the recommendations are uh, comprehensive diagnostics before, quite clear, uh, treatment planning, but important with involvement of the patients, and establishing a good therapeutic alliance. And uh, the concrete therapy recommendations uh, you, we read, there are antipsychotics, there is cognitive behavior therapy, family intervention, psychoeducation, and the avoidance of a permanent hospitalization. And also, and that's the important thing, and you see that the, uh, the example of uh, the American, uh, what I showed you in the United States, uh, you have to, uh, to uh, offer an outreach community psychiatric treatment in the living environment and the participation uh, in working life as soon as it's possible. <clears throat> so it's, uh, we have to do many uh, uh, different actions to help the patients. And one, <clears throat> we are, have three pillars uh, which are important. One is uh, psychopharmacotherapy, but uh, the problem is it's uh, on the one side easy to deal, but on the other side, uh, you have a, a rapid success, but you have non-adherence, non-response, and side effects. Uh, the patients have to struggle with, uh, uh, struggle with it on the long run. We have psychotherapy. It's not easy to implement, and um, <clears throat> you need a well-educated staff. Uh, you need the readiness of the patients, so it's not easy to get all patients to a, a good psychotherapy. And you need rehabilitation, and that means a high level of organization, uh, which we don't have everywhere in the country, <clears throat> as well as, as assertive community treatment possibilities. So what can we do in all-day practice? Uh, we need a good, positive, therapeutic relationship with the patients. That means a, re a resilient relationship based on trust and empathy, a calm, relaxed, and emotionally warm atmosphere, the avoidance of controversial discussions, the avoidance of a sensory overload, especially for schizophrenic patients, a clear and unambiguous communication, problem focus and clarification, what are the problems uh, we can address, <clears throat> the activation of the own resources, uh, the development of skills in small steps, and the avoidance of excessive demands and stress of any kind. So uh, this is uh, not easy to realize, but I think uh, we have uh, to have it in mind as a, as a guideline uh, for our uh, dealing, all day dealing. <clears throat> and how could we find access to the patient in an easy way? That is the first, we have to ask for the needs. And we have to clarify all the uh, uh, treatment possibilities we have together with the patients. We have to do a shared decision making also together with relatives. I think it's very important to include relatives from the first day on uh, treatment uh, within the treatment planning. <clears throat> and we should involve peers as uh, so often as it is possible, and we should do a good uh, kind of psychoeducation as well. What we did in our hospital, what, uh, which works up to now, is that we opened the doors for peers and we implemented together with them a so-called psychosis workshop, which is uh, twice, we, uh, we invite uh, twice a month in the hospital and we talk about everything, uh, belonging mental Ill illnesses, together with uh, peers, together with patients, uh, together with relatives, together with people who are just interested in an open discussion. Um, and this is a good basis uh, for uh, 
uh, growing up, understanding what uh, can, what really we can do and what are the limits. Uh, so it's it's an effective tool in our all day work in hospital. And uh, the other thing is we do a psychoeducation for all our patients. Just a short, uh, just to give you a short definition. Um, this uh, psychoeducation covers systematic didactic psychotherapeutic measures that are suitable for informing patients and their relatives about the disease and its treatments, for promoting an understanding of the disease and a self-responsible approach to dealing with it, and for supporting them in coping with the disease. So. You can do a diff a, a, a psychoeducation in very different forms. You can uh, talk only to patients. Uh, you can organize uh, groups or uh, psychoeducation groups only for relatives, or you can do groups for patients and uh, relatives separately. But what we did in our hospital, we brought all the all them together. So we uh, <clears throat> invite patients and relatives. Uh, for this multifamily intervention in a way that we ask patients uh, and offer them um, what we can do. And so they, de uh, they uh, decide um, <clears throat> uh, how and whom he, uh, they will bring with into the group. And we start with around about four, six to four patients and they uh, bring in together, uh, bring in with it, uh, it to the group to sisters, parents, uh, uh, spouses, people uh, uh, who live very close together with them. So we are all in all 15 up to 18 persons. And we don't select it. We uh, the, the patients decide and the relatives decide whether to come or not. And we are uh, very open in this. But when the group starts, it's closed for uh, around about 10 sessions. And what we do in our hospital is more than pure psychoeducation that means imparting knowledge about the disease. We do uh, also a skills training and to, to teach the families and the patients uh, coping strategies uh, which they can use uh, themselves. So <clears throat> I skip this uh, uh, slides because of the time and uh, show you directly uh, what we are doing. Uh, first of all, for multifamily intervention, you need a, a certain basic attitude. And we uh, derived it uh, fr from a publication of Rossetti, um, <clears throat> and it's our, it's our uh, guideline. It's necessary to interpret things in a kind and mild way. There is ab no absolute truth. All are doing the best at this moment. This is, these are all messages we gave, gave into the groups. And all need to try harder. Relatives need a healthy egoism. Relatives need to learn uh, to say no for special problems. Relatives need their own supportive social network. Relatives need to accept that they cannot solve their relatives' problems. And relatives need to accept that they will lose their composure every now and then, and that's not a problem where we can deal with it. So this is a baseline, and uh, then we offer them uh, 12 sessions, one session a week, one and a half hour in the evening, because many relatives are on job, though they can't come at the day. And uh, here uh, I show very short, um, the yellow ones are the sessions with pure information, pure psychoeducation. We talk about the disease, we introduce uh, a, a special model of the um, starting of uh, mental diseases. We talk about treatment, what, what are the benefits, what are the uh, side effects, what are the risks, two sessions. Uh, we talk about early warning signs. And this is a very important part of psychoeducation with the patients because uh, <clears throat> we try to bring them to a point that the family or the, the partners uh, are, uh, have a consens. What are the early signs uh, of the sickness and what is to do in this time? You, very often uh, a patient has early signs and he says, okay, I, I hope it will not happen to me <laughs> again and, and next relapse and I don't do anything and closing, uh, closing their eyes. But the uh, family is seeing it 
And so it's very important uh, that we uh, <coughs> uh, uh, tell them they should do uh, some kind of a contract, you know, a contract in the family, what is to, do, uh, to be done uh, uh, to, to prevent a new relapse. And <coughs> then we... Мы также говорим о различных стратегиях и о возможностях улучшения. Uh, uh, legitimate claims, how can I say something is disturbing me without hurting the other one, active listening, how can I listen to somebody that, he re that I really understand what he is saying, and two sessions about problem-solving uh, strategies. <clears throat> so we do it in a way that we explain these uh, 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 skills uh, in front of the group, and then we part the group in uh, smaller subgroups of two or three persons who train it with, for half an hour, and then we come together and discuss whether, uh, if it works or not. Uh, so we can uh, do it ver very well in one and a half hour, um, <clears throat> and uh, we give uh, many handouts. You know, we give many information by paper to the patients, so they have a little booklet at the end uh, with these strategies, so they can train at home and uh, with information about the sickness. <clears throat> so this is, uh, and if they ask for, them, for it, we do a 12th session about um, addiction and psychosis because very often we have young patients uh, who, uh, <clears throat> who, do, who uh, smoking uh, cannabis, for example, and so uh, if, they ask, uh, if they ask for it, uh, we do this uh, extra. So I skip the next. Um, uh, slides uh, to come. One, one thing I, I wanted to say is uh, what was a very important experience for us. We do it now since tw more than 20 years in this uh, way. In the pandemic, it, w it stopped the group, um, the possibility to, to come together as a group, and we did it by Zoom. Uh, so we were not sure whether we could do it, but it was a very interesting effect because uh, uh, there came together families which didn't live together. So the father lived in Berlin and the daughter who has a schizophrenia and her mother lived in Karlsruhe. Uh, or another couple, uh, she lived in Darmstadt, her, her friend works in Kiel. And so we brought people together uh, who never would have been together in, uh, without, <laughs> without the Zoom and without pandemia. And it was very effective. And we could also do the skill training by doing breakout sessions within, uh, within, it, <clears throat> within the training. Uh, so we uh, are very convinced that this, uh, this is a good method uh, to, <clears throat> uh, to uh, do multifamily intervention as well by internet. So uh, let me close. Uh, I just give you a short f overview about one study we did, and what you see is here in the, in the blue line that in the intervention group, uh, the relapse rates uh, decreased within one year from 97% before the intervention to 55% after the intervention. That means a reduction of 40% only uh, uh, <clears throat> due to this uh, multifamily intervention. As well, uh, <clears throat> the PANS uh, symptoms reduced uh, very strong. Also, the blue line you see, and uh, <clears throat> uh, the quality of life increased uh, with the uh, intervention group. Uh, so we can say with our method, uh, it is very helpful. And uh, what supports us in this is uh, a, a meta-analysis analysis which is done by Bigelli. And she showed uh, that family interventions are the most, sorry, sorry, one, one more slide, uh, that uh, <clears throat> uh, fa family interventions are the most effective uh, intervention form uh, in uh, treating schizophrenic disorders. All the dots you see here on the left side favors the treatment, 
and all dots on the right side doesn't favor it. And you see family intervention here uh, at the first point, uh, as well as cognitive behavior therapy, for example. Uh, so we can uh, we are supported by uh, all the other experiences, and uh, what I can say, we really should uh, implement it in all day practice, and it's a very helpful instrument. Thank you very much.